Few names in the history of the United States ring out with a level of infamy such as Alcatraz, the famous prison which housed some of the most dangerous men in the entire country has been immortalized through films, novels, television, and documentary videos just like this one. Today is the first video in a series where we take a look at the history of this seemingly innocuous piece of land nestled just off the San Francisco coastline. Before it was the confines of men like Al Capone and Machine Gun Kelly, Alcatraz was nothing more than an unexplored island pressed against the California horizon. And its history prior to European settlement has proven to be every bit as intriguing as its time being the most notorious prison in America. The 16th century was arguably one of the most transformative for the modern world. Columbus's expedition to the Americas in 1492 had caused a tidal wave of explorative fervor as monarchs all across Europe set out to stake their claim in the New World. Few of them having an appetite for discovery like that of the Spanish Empire. By 1535, they had established a massive colony in the Americas that stretched from Costa Rica to California, called New Spain. In 1542, Antonio de Mendoza, the Viceroy of New Spain, recruited an enthusiastic explorer by the name of Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo to explore the northern part of the colony's west coast. The purpose of this was to discover the fabled Northern Passage, a sea route that led from the Americas to Asia, a coveted prize indeed considering the amount of Asian material European countries relied upon. It also helped Mendoza had heard stories of gold, pearls, and other vast riches covering the unexplored lands. On June 27, 1542, Cabrillo and his crew of 100 men departed from modern-day Alcapoco in a newly christened sailing vessel called the San Salvador, accompanied by a support ship named the Victoria. Catching a strong wind north, the expedition began their journey. As they traveled along the west coast of New Spain, they enthusiastically charted maps and laid claim to multiple territories along the way. However, due to the furious pace at which they sailed, and their decision to not stop and actually explore any of the lands they were laying claim to, their maps proved horribly inaccurate. On top of this, it was later discovered that Cabrillo's navigation logs were all off by a couple degrees longitude, possibly due to a broken compass. This was the first in a string of several misfortunes that befell the expedition, the worst of which would cost Cabrillo his life. The fleet passed Alcatraz and the San Francisco Bay, but due to the bay being blocked from view, Cabrillo and company went right past it without noticing. Eventually, they ran into a stretch of terrible storms that caused the San Salvador and the Victoria to be separated from one another, the former of which continued its journey north, making it as far as the Russian River before finally deciding to turn around as Cabrillo did not want to go any further without his other ship. As they ventured back south, the expedition again missed sight of the San Francisco Bay and Alcatraz Island, although they did eventually link back up with the Victoria just north of Monterey. After extensive repairs to both vessels, the duo once again set out to sea, plotting a course north. This led them to San Miguel Island, where the crew briefly stopped. On one fateful day, 
Members of the expedition were ambushed by natives as they stopped to fill drinking urns. This prompted Cabrillo to lead a rescue mission during which he suffered a severely broken leg jumping from a shore boat. Over the next couple weeks, gangrene set into the open fracture, and Cabrillo died on January 3, 1543. His dying order to his successor, senior navigator Bartolome Ferrello, was to continue northward, an order the navigator turned captain honored, venturing even further north than had been originally intended, all the way to the Rouge River in modern-day Oregon. Harsh winter weather and a supply shortage, however, would force the expedition to cut their losses and head home. They arrived back in disgrace, a mere ten months after departing, with Mendoza declaring the voyage a complete disaster. Not only were the few crewmen who remained suffering from starvation and scurvy, but they were completely empty-handed. No gold, no pearls, and worst of all, no northern passage. Only a collection of maps that would later prove inaccurate. Though this whole endeavor certainly seemed like a failure on the surface, it was the first expedition to have charted the California coastline in any capacity, and the crude maps Cabrillo made would prove invaluable to future explorers who would refine his work. As far as his failure to notice the San Francisco Bay is concerned, it would prove an error that Cabrillo's contemporaries would repeat in almost comical fashion. In 1577, English explorer Francis Drake embarked on a journey to find the Northern Passage. This expedition would become infamous, as Drake spent as much time exploring as he did raiding and pillaging Spanish settlements. Battles with Spanish and severe storms had worn Drake's five-ship fleet down to three by the time they had reached the Strait of Magellan to cross into the Pacific Ocean. The captain was forced to stop for repairs before he could cross it, however, so he could get his three remaining seaworthy vessels back to working condition. In September of 1578, the three-vessel fleet made their way through the strait into the Pacific Ocean, where they were immediately hit with horrendous weather that endured for two months. After weeks of being battered by bad weather, the smallest of the three vessels, the Marigold, sunk with her entire crew being lost at sea. This prompted a second ship, the Elizabeth, to turn around and sail back home for England. Now, only Francis Drake's flagship, the Golden Hind, remained. After raiding Spanish ports and settlements over the next several months, the vessel was forced to dock for extensive repairs in an area to the south of Point Reyes, California. Over the course of the next five weeks, Drake explored inland and interacted with several local tribes who graciously offered the English gifts and supplies. Eventually claiming an area of land, coined a new Albion for Queen Elizabeth. Despite his extensive exploration of the area, however, Francis Drake also failed to notice the entrance leading to the San Francisco Bay. The valuable body of water and its surrounding islands had once again proved a ghost to English explorers. It is entirely possible, and in fact likely, that the natives who welcomed Drake with warm gifts and pleasantries had already explored Alcatraz Island with canoes, though without a written record, it is hard to be certain. With his ship repaired, Drake made the decision to push out toward the Pacific Ocean, going around the southern ends of Asia and Africa before returning home to England, where he was given a hero's welcome. Even being knighted by Queen Elizabeth, becoming henceforth known as Sir Francis Drake, Though he had made a fortune for the crown, 
and became one of the most revered men in all of England as a result, he too had failed to discover Alcatraz Island in the San Francisco Bay, a feat that wouldn't be accomplished for still quite some time. In fact, it would be almost 200 more years before the secrets of the mysterious bay would finally be revealed. From the late 1580s to the late 1760s, Jesuit missionaries had control of New Spain's northwestern frontier, thanks to a decree from the King of Spain himself. However, the crown eventually grew distrustful of the Jesuits, believing they intended to subvert the Spanish government and take power for themselves. This eventually led to the Spanish government ordering their expulsion. The man appointed for the task of evicting the Jesuits was José de Galvez, special envoy to the King of Spain. He in turn appointed one of his most trusted captains, Gaspar de Portola, to lead a self-described sacred expedition to the colonies in California. Portola led three vessels filled with gold, weapons, and livestock up the California coastline for this sacred mission, but quickly encountered major problems. The ships were old and had not been cared for as they should have, making them not truly seaworthy. One of the vessels took on so much water it sunk and the entire crew was lost. A shortage of supplies had left crews of the other two vessels sick and malnourished, yet Portolo pushed on. By the end of the expedition, half of the crew would be dead from drowning, disease, or starvation. Navigation errors had caused the fleet to overshoot its intended mark, further delaying their journey as they had to turn back around. The last of his supplies dwindled, and his crew, along with Portola himself, ravaged by disease, the captain made a decision to stop and rest as well as conduct some repairs. During this time, on Halloween 1769, Portolo's party sighted the San Francisco Bay while scouting the area known today as Sweeney Ridge. The captain took note and sent some scouts further east where they discovered a native tribe that traded them some much needed food. But unfortunately, he was unable to grasp the magnitude of what he had seen. After his crew was rested and his ships repaired, Portolo turned south, finally reaching his original destination of modern-day San Diego. It would fall on another to truly understand what it was Portola had found. In 1775, the American colonies were on the cusp of war with their motherland, Great Britain, which had found itself entangled in an almost endless series of wars throughout the 18th century. Across the continent, a Spanish naval lieutenant by the name of Juan Manuel de Ayala was tasked with charting the waters of the bay that Portola had discovered six years prior. On August 11, 1775, the first written documentation of Alcatraz Island was penned in Juan Manuel's journal. Many wondered how such a perfect harbor could have evaded European explorers for centuries. Some believed the presence of the Farallon Islands may have caused the ship crews to fear hidden reefs nearby, causing them to keep their ships out in deep water. Others say the near-perfect positioning of Alcatraz covering the entrance to the bay caused it to blend with the horizon and look like one solid shoreline. Whatever the reason, the elusive bay had now been discovered by European settlers, and its legend would grow immensely during the following century. Join us in the next episode, where we talk about Alcatraz's military use throughout the 19th century. If you enjoyed this video, 
don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so you can be updated whenever a new one is posted. This is Crime Spot, and thank you for watching. Thank you.